who share testimonies of God's goodness. Um, sometimes when we get on here together, um, we don't realize, and, and I was reminded as, as, as the elder was, was praying, we don't realize that God, by his Holy Spirit's power, has the ability to make anything that is said here tonight be from his Holy Spirit. He, I mean, sometimes he uses me, sometimes he'll use something somebody else has said. So it's so important when you give the testimony that you give, uh, uh, it's so important to, to, to let that thing be known, let the people who have been blessed by God say so. That is so important um, because we just never know what seeds are being planted. We never know who God is using uh, or who's hearing what is being said and, and is being uplifted. Maybe someone's going through some private pain that, that, that you've already come out of. And your testimony is the thing that gives them encouragement from the Lord to, to keep going on. I, that, that, that testimony may be the thing that makes them say, I feel like going on. I can, I can continue on because I see that such and such made it through. I can make it through. I see, I, I'm reminded of what God has done in the past. And he, if he did it before, he'll do it again. And so we praise the Lord for the testimonies. Praise the Lord for the prayer requests. Because we when we pray, we pray in faith, knowing that we're not just praying. Uh, our prayers go higher than the ceiling in our house. Uh, our prayers go better than just around the Zoom atmosphere. Our prayers uh, go even to the throne room of heaven. And we can know and have that assurance based on what God has promised. Tonight, we're looking back at, at the book of Matthew, Matthew 4. We've been looking at this whole season in Jesus's life as he's beginning ministry, as he's coming out of anonymity, out of being anonymous for the first 30 plus years of his life. And he, he is now uh coming on to the stage and and we've talked about how he 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 came up out of the water that being baptized not because he needed to wash away his sins but because it, it was a the calling into his purpose and, and and the father said uh this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased the, the holy spirit descended like a dove he has that in his memory and then he he went into these 40 days and 40 nights of fasting in the wilderness and and praying and spending that time time with the father getting connected. And now uh, last week we, we saw how he's now entering into temptation. Um, the Holy Spirit has led him into this place. And, and beloved, when God's spirit leads you somewhere, you can be thankful that he's not going to just lead you to it. He's going to lead you through it. Um, constantly, the Bible talks about it, uh, how God is leading us through situations. Notice even in, in, in Isaiah, um, just off the top of, I think, I think it's Isaiah 43, when God says, hey, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He didn't say when you're in the water and stand there. He says, when you're going through, when you're going through the fire, because God doesn't ever intend to leave us in those situations. He intends to take us through it to the perfect place that he has prepared for us. And, and then we saw how Satan at Jesus's lowest point, Satan is now uh, choosing to bring temptation to Jesus. He is tempting him. He said, hey, if you are the son of God, turn these these stones into bread we talked about how 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 the appetite thing must have kicked in that must have been a temptation for jesus but jesus is jesus's purpose in life just like our purpose in life is to to connect with the father and to to receive all of his needs being met by the father and and, and god does the same thing for us but he he opens his hand and satisfies the desires of our heart satisfies us out of his hand and that that's the only satisfaction that god desires that we have nothing no side snacks and stuff like that god desires to be the our only our only satisfaction and so tonight we're looking at uh, verse five, uh, verses five through seven, Matthew chapter four, uh, verses five through seven. And, and the word of God says is here on the screen. Then the devil took him up into the holy city 
and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Uh, verse six says, and said to him, if, have mercy, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for, look at he about to quote some scripture, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But Jesus wasn't going to let that, let that just sit out there. So he, in verse seven, he says, uh, Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord, your God. We'll use the title tonight. Prove it. Prove it. Uh, I, I remember one time I was playing basketball uh, many, many lifetimes ago. I was playing basketball with my uh, with one of my friends. Um, God had, had had been very kind to me in the sport of basketball. And I, I had be, I had become very, very good at that particular sport. And uh, but my friend who was playing with me, we we happened to be playing together. He wasn't uh, he didn't have those same talent. His talents were elsewhere. His 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 his, uh, his different goals and everything had had different. He was more scholastic, more academic in his in his prowess. But uh, he challenged me to a basketball game. He challenged me to a game of basketball, and and, and he he told me he says that if you if you're better than me, you need to beat me in this game. If not, if I win this game, that means I'm better than you. Now, obviously, that was that was a stupid decision for me. I'm like, there there was nothing to be proven. I I it was very clear that that I was a, a much better player than he was. But I said, okay, I will play you. And I played against him in a game and I soundly defeated him, soundly defeated him. But at the end of the game, he said, well, you beat me, but you never dunked on me. So I win. <laughs> he, he said, you never dunked on me. So I win. And, and, and as I was look, thinking back on that, I'm like, why in the world do I need to prove this situation? And I feel like sometimes uh, when we get into these situations with Satan and and, and these situations of temptation, uh, it's it's like Satan is trying to get us to prove something that is already the case. Prove that you're a child of God. Prove that you are are who you say you are. Prove that 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 God really loves you. Prove that God really cares. Prove that God is really your father. This situation of presumption is something that looms large in the Christian life. As a matter of fact, we tend to go between these two extremes, the first and second temptation. The first temptation was to do you believe what that God can? It was a test of faith. Uh, uh, many times we fail on the test of faith, not believing that God can do what he said he can do. But the opposite extreme is a problem as well. Uh, and that's where presumption comes in. Presumption is assuming God's going to do things that he either has never promised or out of a prove it mentality. So uh, if, if I'm if I'm asking God to do something for me, uh, to show his love for me, once again, instead of realizing that God already loves me and he desires to lavish gifts on the people in whom he loves, uh, if I'm coming from a mentality that, God, you've got to show me again, then that becomes a presumptuous situation. Satan has found Jesus to be faithful in the first temptation regarding food. But, but now the word of God says Jesus is taken up into, uh, uh, he's taken him up into the holy city. This is Jesus's city. This is the city that, that, that it said that the desire of nations would be connected with the city. And, 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 and Satan sets him up on the pinnacle of the temple. And, and again, insinuates this, 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 this doubtful if, if, you are the son of God. 
Now, remember, just 40 days before now, Jesus has heard the voice of God thundering in his ear saying, you are the son of God. He didn't have to guess. He didn't have to, I wonder what things are like. He knew it for a fact that he was the son of God. Very clearly, he knew that he is the son of God. But when Satan came at him, he wanted to, to, to make him feel like, oh, maybe you're not the son of God. Maybe because you haven't been taken care of. Maybe because maybe you if you are, won't you show me you're the son of God? Don't 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 just talk about being the son of God. Show me and show yourself because, you know, you probably need to know something on your own. Uh, are you the son of God? The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And sometimes, you know, it, it, when we talk about hearing, it, it also depends on what you're hearing. It, it, it depends on, on what you're hearing. It, it, see, see, if you're listening to what God says to you, then, then that faith comes through very clearly. But if you're listening to what the enemy says, that faith will come through very clearly as well. So, so, so if you if listen to the enemy saying that you are not the you are not a son and daughter of God because of what you did, your life is too bad. All the shame. Remember how you treated that person. Remember that stuff you messed up on. If you listen to the enemy say that, then that faith will become uh, faith will become sight as well. Now we, we start to listen to the enemy, and the enemy talks us out of our salvation. He he, he will talk you out because he cannot take it from you. He cannot tempt you away from it. Uh, the only way he can get it from you is for him to deceive you into thinking that what actually is that we receive by faith in, in the Son of God does not belong to you and is not God's to give you. He loves to go down that road. And so with Jesus, he's, he's telling Jesus, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, and, and then he takes it another level on this thing. He says, throw yourself down. That, that just seems so silly to me. But uh, he says, throw yourself down because, and then he quoting scriptures on it. You know, whenever somebody pulls their Bible out, you know, they, they, they seem to have some level of, uh, of authority. He, he, he says, hold on, let, let, let me quote some scripture for you. He, he says to him, uh, he shall give his angels charge over you. Why are you jabbing up for me? I got to clean up he, <laughs> He is he he's he's telling this thing that is actually in the word of God. He's quoting Psalm 91, but he's misquoting Psalm 91 because he leaves out a big portion of that. As a matter of fact, we know that that scripture says he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways, meaning God gives his angels charge over us in order to continue to allow us to walk the path that God has lined out for us. That's why he gives his angels charge over us, not just to, to, to try and, and, and do some silly stuff in order to, to test and see if God is really, really keeping us as he says. See, Satan knew just as well as we should know that Satan cannot do anything to us unless he, he has no power or authority over us. He's going to try to tempt you into doing something. He's going to try to make you feel a particular way. He's going to try to, to try to try to uh, uh, dredge up something that's already in you. And that's why it's so important to ask the Holy Spirit to take every desire for sin out of you. That has to be a daily prayer because the world is full of sinful situations. And if you have sin that you desire in you, it didn't even have to be a, a sin that you've done or, or, or anything. But if you have that desire in you, Satan can work with that thing. He can see that Satan is a great psychologist. He can't read your mind, but he's been studying people for 6,000 years and he knows how people go. He knows when you, when you look a little bit longer at, at, at that television program that you shouldn't watch. He he knows when you, when, when he knows when you when you thinking about how much money you can get. He knows the power that you're trying to trying to wield so that you can have uh, uh, some type of authority. He knows the things that are burdening you. He knows where your desires for sin is. And so he's going to try to attack those desires. He's going to try to get that thing just where he wants it. But beloved, God has given us power too.
God has given us the ability to, to, to call on his name. God has given us power through Jesus to overcome every single temptation. And so even though Satan comes with some, some, some proof text and, and he, 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 he twists the word to, to mean and to say what he wanted to say, uh, Jesus doesn't, doesn't even, doesn't even deal with that situation. Jesus comes in and he uh, deals with the situation. He, 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 he's going to set the record straight. He's going to make sure he's very clear with what the word of God says. And so Jesus said to him, it, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord, your God. You shall not tempt the Lord, your God. He's quoting, um, Exodus, when the people of God are asking for a sign, the people of God are trying to get some type of a, a sign from, from uh, God after he has constantly done so much for them. He, he's delivered them from Egypt. He, he, he's delivered them through the Red Sea. He, he, he's done all of these things and they're asking for more. And, and Jesus is equating what Satan is doing to what uh, to what the, the the enemy was doing back in that time. And so uh, And so we see now Satan is trying to do the same thing because when evil evil has this way of doing the same thing over and over again, evil continues to play out its own way. See see the truth is 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 going to be a a level wonderful, pure direction but evil seems to continue to play the same hand over and over again and, and so jesus is saying do not do not tempt me do not pr pr uh, get the prep uh get all of this presumption out of here uh, because the christian the, the person of god lives by faith not by presumption not by anything else remember what hebrews 11 says without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that God exists and that God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Listen to what Ellen White says in the desire of ages. She says, we should not present our petitions to God to prove whether he will fulfill his word, but because he will fulfill it, not to prove that he loves us, but because he loves us. See, we have a God who cares and loves us with an unconditional love. And I don't know what's going on in your life right now. You're going through pain. You're going through sorrow. Different situations are going through on anxiety, uh, discouragement. I don't know what's going on, but the enemy is trying to use that situation. He's trying to whisper in your ear to say, God does not love you. And if he did, he would take you out of that situation. If God loved you, he would he would show you his love through the way he's treating you. And the way the reason why God is treating you this way or allowing the situation to happen is because God is not who he says he is. And God is trying to let us know, no, absolutely not. Different situations come and I lead you into different directions because I'm trying to pull out some choice fruit. We're living in these last days, y'all. And it's so important now to hold tight to God, hold tight to his word, hold tight to his promises than ever before on this planet. It's time we're, we're, we're about to go into this time where God, Jesus is going to break the clouds and, and the enemy knows his time is short. And so, so beloved, this is the time to, to draw deep into God. This is the time to, to be on our knees, asking God to remove every desire for sin, everything in our lives. This is the time for us to be gaining trust in God. This is that time. God's Holy Spirit is, is going to be poured out and he's going to do his amazing thing. Why not start with us? Why not be like those in that upper room asking God's power and his presence right now so that we can go out and do the work that he has called us to do? God is, is desiring to do all of this through us. And beloved, I challenge you to, to have, that, have that mentality. I challenge you to have the mentality of, I want God to take everything, all desires from me. I want God to, to have this special 
relationship that he desires to have with me. And I surrender to it. I let him have his way. I want to believe him and, and not need proof, not need any kind of justification. I got it all based on what he has done for me on Calvary, based on what he does for me on a daily basis. I, I surrender to him. And if that's you, please pray with me. Father, thank you so much for all that you have done for us, Lord. You sent your son. You died for our sins every single day. And that, and that was the, that thing that you did on Calvary was just a show of your love. It was just a demonstration of your love. And, and if you would demonstrate your love in that way, what wouldn't you do on our behalf? What wouldn't you do on behalf of those who you love? So God, teach us to trust you. Teach us to see your hand throughout our lives. May we not listen to the enemy when he tries to tell us that you're not good. May we not listen to the enemy when he tells you that uh, you, you have to show your love. You have to prove your love to us. May we go on and on day by day, knowing that you are in control, knowing that you have a purpose for our lives, once more time, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we can continue down this, this work that you've called us to do. And Lord, may we all hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen.